In this video, I'll demonstrate how to connect a Windows Nano server to an Active Directory domain. The first thing we should do is verify that the Nano server has been properly deployed. Here in the Hyper-V Manager, I have a Nano virtual machine running. It's called Nano-1. Now, there's no point in double-clicking on it to open up the interface because there is none with Nano server. It's a headless operating system. That means we have to manage it entirely over the network. Now, I know that the Nano server was provisioned with a specific IP address, so I should verify it's pingable over the network. So I'm going to go ahead and ping the IP address of the Nano server, and I'm getting a reply. Now, when a Nano server is initially provisioned, it could have a static IP address assigned to it, or if it's using DHCP, we could verify what the Nano server's IP address is by looking at the active leases. So this is good news. We're getting a reply from the Nano server. Now I'm going to switch over to the PowerShell ISC to run a number of steps. Because the Nano server is not yet joined to an Active Directory domain, there's no implied level of trust between it and other hosts on the network, such as the one I'm sitting at. So I'm going to use the set-item PowerShell commandlet to add the IP address of my newly provisioned Nano server to the local trusted hosts list. So I'll go ahead and execute that line of code. And then I'm going to use get-item to verify that it took. And indeed, we can see our nano server IP address is listed as a trusted host. Now, the next thing we'll do on this machine, which is joined to our Active Directory domain, is we'll use the djoin command to provision a new Active Directory offline domain join file. So, I'm going to specify with the slash domain parameter the name of our Active Directory domain. I'll specify the machine name, that's the computer name, and I'll use the save file switch to specify the path and the location of where I want to store this offline domain join file for my nano server. Now, I'm going to need to get that file to the nano server to complete joining it to an Active Directory domain. But let's do one step at a time. So, we'll run this command. And after a moment, if we do a directory listing of the root of drive C, we'll see that we have our new offline domain join file for our nano-1 server. So the next thing we'll do is map a drive to the server. I'll do that using net use. We can see drive letter W is being used here. So I'm going to copy our file, the offline domain join file, to the nano server, which in this case is drive W. So I'll go ahead and execute that line. Now that that's been done, the next thing we need to do on the nano server is join the domain given that offline domain join file. So I'm going to enter a remote PowerShell session with our nano server given its IP address, which remember is now added to the local trusted hosts list. Then I'll use the dash credential switch and within parentheses, I'll tell it to execute get dash credential, which will ask me for a username and password. Now, when a nano server is initially provisioned, one way or another, we specify the administrator password and username. So here, I'm going to put in those credentials. And after a moment, I will have entered a remote PowerShell session with our nano server, which is not yet joined to the domain. However, if I go to the root of drive C in my remote PowerShell session and do a DIR, we'll see our offline domain join file that we can use to now join the domain. So I'm going to issue the djoin command where I request an offline domain join. I specify the load file that we copied. I'll specify the Windows path and I'll use the slash local OS switch. So I'll go ahead and press enter. So we can see now that the operation completed successfully. So the computer, the nano server has been joined to the Active Directory domain. It does tell me, however, that a reboot is required for changes to be applied to the Nano server. So now we can restart the Nano server within our remote PowerShell session using the shutdown command, and then we can exit the session, let it reboot, and then we'll verify that the server was joined to the domain. We can verify that the Nano server is joined to the domain here in Active Directory Users and Computers, where we can go to the Computers container, and indeed we see Nano-1 is now listed. We could also take a look at that in PowerShell. Here in PowerShell, I'll use get ad computer and I'll filter for all computers. And we can see that Nano1 has now been joined to the Active Directory domain.